you're a WordPress user, entrepreneur, aspiring web designer, and you're at that point of your web design journey where you're wondering which types of image files you should be using to make your website faster. You see, image files are one of the primary reasons for poor loading times on most websites out there. I've spent six years of my life doing a lot of client work with companies and businesses in different industries and the vast majority of the speed related issues that I've come across in my career had to do with images. But let's face it, this isn't 2005 anymore. We have so many different types of image files to work with from the classic JPEGs and PNGs to WebP images and SVGs that it may all sound just a little bit too overwhelming. Anyways, stick around and I'll show you which image files you should be using under which circumstances to make your website faster. Images are a crucial aspect of a website. It doesn't really matter what you're selling. It could be shoes, it could be toys, it could be software, it could be yourself, not yourself, but your services as a freelancer or consultant. And regardless of what you're selling, images will 100% help you get more conversions. But good high quality images usually come at a cost. Take a look at this, for example. A few years ago, I went out and I had a really nice photographer take some nice photos of me. And you know, these images are super sharp. And when I use them on a website, they make me look smarter. Problem is that these super nice high resolution images are unusable on a website if I were to just, you know, use the file that the photographer sent me. Because some of these images are, you know, of such a really good quality that some of these can be up to 10 megabytes big and you simply can't upload a 10 megabyte image on your website. Well, let me rephrase this. You shouldn't upload a 10 megabyte image on your site. Not, it, not even a one megabyte image on your site, but you know, some people still do this and then they wonder why their site takes too long to load. Ideally speaking, your page should be under one megabyte in size. Although depending on what type of, your, well, of website you're building, it could be a little bit bigger than that. But notice how I said your page not image, your page should be under one megabyte big. And your web page isn't just made up of images. You also have text, you may have a video that you need to pull from YouTube, you may have icons and so forth and so on. My point is taking into account that your web page should be probably around one megabyte big in, si in size, in total size, that gives you a hint as to how big in size your images should be. So how do I fix this issue? How do I take the picture that the photographer took for me and optimize it for my website? Well, the first step is to bring down the size of the image itself. If we look at the details for some of these images, you can see that they are of an incredible high resolution. I mean, 3000 by 5000 pixels is just not the kind of resolution that we need to display these types of images on our site. If I'm going to use this picture in the about section of my page, I can probably scale down the image to be half the size of that, probably even more. And the image will still look really sharp on my website because it's still of a high enough resolution for the amount of real estate screen that we're going to be displaying it on. Now that I have a good image that has been scaled down to an appropriate size, we need to figure out where the image is going to be placed. And here's where we're going to start talking about the different types of image files. You see an image that is going to be placed over a colored background and needs to be transparent so that it doesn't come into conflict with the background needs to be a PNG image. There's no way around that. Transparent images will always be PNGs. And there are some instances where you need your images to be transparent. For example, this image with this background looks okay for an about section where my image is being cropped and doesn't come into conflict with any other type of background color. But the same image needs to be transparent if I want to use it on the hero section of my consulting site if I want the hero section to come across as being clean. As a rule of thumb, PNG images that preserve transparency will almost always be heavier than JPEG images even if we're talking about the same exact image. This is why when possible, it's best to use JPEG images if you can find a way of not have it come into conflict with the background where you're placing it on. Now, regardless of whether you end up uploading PNG images or JPEG images to your WordPress website, we wanna make sure we compress them down as much as we possibly can. You see, images are a little bit sneaky. 
they're not just the image that you're looking at with your eyes. Each image has additional information that it carries with it that makes it weight more than it should. And there are tools like Kraken or ShortPixel that can help you squash down the size of your image without impacting the quality whatsoever. Pretty magical stuff. Okay, so we've covered many things so far, including how to scale images for web, how to compress them using something like ShortPixel or Kraken, and when to use JPEGs and PNGs. With all of this information, you should already be good to go to start using images the right way. But before you go, I do wanna talk really quickly about WebP images. You see, WebP images are a new type of modern image file developed by Google that allow you to compress traditional JPEGs and PNG images without having to sacrifice any quality whatsoever. Yes, it's essentially another way of compressing images even more. And let me tell you, it works pretty well. And what's best, it's very easy for us to automatically display WebP images without even having to export our JPEGs and PNGs into a new type of image files. With ShortPixels plugin installed on our website, for example, we can automatically have it squash every single one of our uploads and have it create and display a WebP version as well on the front end of our website. Okay, to wrap it up, we wanna use JPEGs as often as we possibly can, as they are oftentimes the lighter type of file that you can use. Then you wanna use PNGs when you have to preserve the transparency of your images so that they don't come into conflict with the background where you're placing them on. And ideally, regardless of whether you upload PNGs or JPEGs, you wanna make sure you scale them down and that you use something like ShortPixel to compress them and to create and display WebP versions of them. By the way, let's not forget that Thrive Architect has some pretty cool built-in features too that will allow you to further customize the look and feel of your images. If you need them to be rounded, it can do that. If you wanna make them black and white, it can do that. And if you have to shrink down the size, it has you covered as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate your time. There's a link in the description box that you can click on if you haven't signed up for Thrive Architect yet. And I shall see you very soon. Thank you so much.